This is the Ubiquiti G6 Pro 360, a camera that I have been waiting a very long time for it to come out. Now I have a bunch of 360 degree cameras deployed at a bunch of different locations and one of the great things about 360 degree cameras is that you're able to view the entire scene and then you can do PTZ without any moving parts, less things to break. The downside of the previous versions of the 360 degree cameras that we've had is the minute you start zooming into something, your resolution starts to drop off significantly. Thankfully, that seems to no longer be the case. They've upgraded this, if I, can get it out of the, if I can get it out of the box. There we go. They've upgraded this with a 1 over 1 1.6 12 megapixel sensor. Yes, this is one of a few reasons why you see that new 5K resolution setting in the Unified Protect panel when looking at the way to sort through the different cameras that you have on your system. This camera is a massive upgrade over the previous generation with three times the resolution and it is a much heftier, much more solid and much more dust and water resistant so you can feel comfortable putting this outside and not having it to have under an overhang anymore if you are in an area that has a lot of water or, you know, weather issues. Looking at the camera straight out of the box on the front side or the downside, depending on how you mount it, you have your traditional dome looking effect here on the top. It is a solid polycarbonate blend. And on the back here, you've got your uh, metal backing. And um, because this thing is completely sealed, you can't actually see where this plugs in and there's no pigtail coming off of it. Now you do have, before we get into it, on this side, looks like or, yep, if I pull that little tab off, then you have a way for the cable to be channeled out the side if you aren't flush mounting it or mounting it directly onto the wall and running the cable into the wall or into the ceiling, depending on how your setup is, and you want to run it through the side, you can still do that. I should probably figure out how to get into this thing. <laughs> First, let's look through the rest of the box. You have its little hat, so we're not going to cover that. You have various mounting options here, which I'll open up and see what we have. Oh, interesting. This is uh, more similar in design to what you'll recognize from the APs. This is plastic, by the way. Then, of course, you have your mounting template with the ubiquity level and your other mounting plate. Similar to other sealed cameras, you have a nice package of desiccant, do not eat. Basically, when you're mounting this, you rip open the package and you include it on the inside. That way, in case there is any kind of moisture that does manage to get in there, the desiccant will take care of that and handle it for you. You've got your various size cable grommets and your, um, I don't know what the term is for this, but the screw that goes in to uh, secure the cable in there. You have your various screw packs here as well as, as they're including in pretty much all of their hefty duty kits now, your security screwdriver and, oh look, a wrench. With, how nice, a wrench with the Ubiquiti logo there on the bottom. Check that out. Very nice. Nice touch Ubiquiti, I'm a fan. Elsewhere in the bottom of the box here we have two different packages of reading materials, and as usual, the get started guide is here on the top of the box. Clear this all aside, don't need any of that, and there is nothing else underneath. So, that's the end of all of that. Let's dig in over here. On the top of the camera, you're going to notice that you have a couple of screws here. That is where this handy dandy screwdriver comes in. I'm just going to uh, stick it in the hole unscrew the screws and we'll get a nice look underneath in a moment. Ubiquiti is claiming an IP66 weather resistant rating on this, which is a massive leap from the old model's IPX4. IPX4 before meant that it could handle a splash of water as long as it was under an a, a overhang. IP66, however, means that it is dust tight and can withstand direct hits from powerful water jets. So yeah, this can now be mounted in places where you weren't able to previously mount the AI360, etc. Okay, I've got those different screws up there, and you can see it just pops off the top there. And I'm going to have to do some B-roll on this. But it looks like you can see uh, in the top here, you've got the lens easily. Of, you have the lens, of course. In the two halves do attach through a nice stretchy setup there. You have these gold pins. I'm guessing that they connect to the other side over right over here, right under my finger. And that's going to power the IR emitters that are usually included in this black array. Now that we're inside, you see you have a message right here. It says attach desiccant here. So that's where that's going to go. This is where your cable is going to go through. And remember that little uh, nut that we saw before that is going to attach there to secure your cable and you're going to use the correct size 
uh, grommet, I guess you could call it, the correct size gland for the cable uh, to lock it in there. Doesn't look like any of the rest of this opens up easily, so I'm not going to take that apart. You do have a uh, PoE in over here on the, on the inside, and that is a 10-100, that's not gigabit anymore. And then you also have, the last thing to notice on here is your micro SD card slot. Let's see, can you see that? There it is, micro SD card slot that is on the very edge for your edge recording. See what I did there? Given that I'm not mounting this on the wall, oh, duh, I should probably plug it into a cable. Good job. One second. I currently have all the rest of the cameras in my test rig connected to the UNVR Instant that I have over here because I just finished testing that. So I guess we'll adopt this to that same device given that I haven't moved everything back over to the UNVR Pro that I have in the rack. All right, let's get the cable plugged in here. And, uh, oh, I guess I should probably do it the right way just so that I can route the cable. Um, how does this fit in? There we go. Make sure to line up your cable. There is an actual uh, rectangular guide for how this goes in. It's not just gonna pop in easily. I'm not going to put the actual nut on in there because I am just doing this in testing over here, but I will close this up. For good measure, I'll screw it in just so that uh, it closes properly. And right away there on the screen, I see G6 Pro 360. So I will adopt that in a moment. Okay, you can see over here, new G6 Pro 360 detected on Network Video Recorder Instant. Now, I am at the limit or possibly even over the limit of how many cameras you're supposed to have on the Instant, but because this is just a test environment, I am going to adopt it here. If I need to, I can disable some of those other cameras. Like I mentioned, I do need to move them back over to the MVR Pro in the rack. But for the meantime, I'm just going to click to adopt so that we can continue with this video. Aha, it's alive. One new device was added. Let's see, do we have a update for this? G6 Pro 360 uh, does not seem to be updating right away. And uh, here you can see right up my nose. So let's see here. Let's go uh, high quality and There we go, this is looking good. So right now it is uh, warped, which means that it is in the 360 circular view as you see here on the screen. And what you can do is you can de-warp it, which makes it flat, and then use the controls on your keyboard in order to move it around and do the PTZ effect. Now granted, what I'm doing right here, this is not, first of all, it's at an angle. You're not gonna be doing it that way. I could do it flat, but then you're looking down into the desk. But here is looking up at me, if I were to lift it up this way a bit more, you can see that I start to look like a normal person uh, over here on the screen. Continuing around, we can get a, a nice uh, 3D, not 3D, what's that uh, parallax effect? The mirror all the way down into the end of time. Yes, I just opened up Portal to Hell, something along those lines. Now again, there's no mechanical parts on this. The PTZ is all happening through the software here and, um, and is uh, a result of the de-warping. I can zoom out. And I can zoom all the way in if you want to take a look back there at my Tab Geeks logo. Zoom in. So yeah, you're still losing resolution, but I'm zoomed in significantly. All right, so we're just going to zoom around here. You can see that we can do PDZ. You can see around the studio a little bit. Um, that's my AI horn that's up in the corner over there. I really got to put that up and do a test on it. I'm not really sure how to do that without pissing off all the neighbors. There's our little portal into hell that way. Eh, look at that. Cool. Um, so yeah, let's let this run the update. I'm going to quickly go through, let me just close this preview. I'm going to quickly go through some of the other uh, settings over here, recording options. You have always uh, custom or never, like usual, the usual stuff, video detections, etc. Uh, frames per second. I'm curious about this. Yeah, it still maxes out at 24 frames per second. That is a difference over the AI 360. The AI 360 can do uh, 30 frames per second, whereas this is now maxed out at 24. And um, you will notice that it is a, a little bit slower, but I imagine they do that for a sharper, crisper, individual uh, image, especially when you are flattening it out. 
Video compression, of course, you can also do for best image quality. Uh, encoding, you can do standard, enhanced, or advanced. And then recording resolution for the first time, I'm seeing a camera with 5K as an option over here. Why you would lower this down to 2K or HD when you paid nearly $500 for a camera, I don't know, but they put it there, it's nice to have. And then of course you can uh, overlay the information. I usually do time and camera name, and sorry Ubiquity, I do deselect the logo, and I do put it in the top left. Uh, zones and lines, this is going to be usual, as usual for any of the other cameras that you, if you have used Protect before. And then of course we can change the name on it, we can disable the microphone if we want to, noise reduction if it's outside in a windy environment, etc. Um, oop, looks like it's updating. Yep. All right, while that's updating, let's get into some of the specs. As mentioned before, this is a 5K 12 megapixel, uh, 3504 by 3504 resolution square sensor. The previous uh, sensor, if I'm not mistaken, on the AI360 is um, 1920 by 1920, and that is a big increase in resolution. So that I, uh, I'm already seeing, but I don't have it up in any kind of production environment, but I am sure that that is a major update just based on those numbers alone. Resolution isn't the only thing that they increased. The IR night vision has increased from 30 feet to 50 feet. And the weatherproofing has gone from IPX4 whilst covered to IP66, which is both dustproof and not waterproof fully, but able to withstand a direct blast from a pressurized water stream. I don't recommend doing this. Usually if you're shooting a direct water stream, like from a pressure washer or something directly at your camera, that's not what it's designed for. You should not do that. And also not how it's going to happen in a regular environment. In fact, even in what is probably one of my more punishing environments, the Long Beach Beer Lab, if they have uh, pressurized hoses going off where there is a camera, and this has occurred, um, usually it's not sustained and it's not sustained at pressure washer levels. And they haven't had any cameras die from that thus far, so, uh, so far so good, but again, that's not pressure washer um, uh, strength. So your mileage may vary, but you've been warned. Okay, we're back online, so let's continue going through the settings over here. You can change the name, as mentioned before, all of this jazz, and that pretty much looks to be the same. Night vision uh, optimization is currently off. We can change that to auto. Status sounds, if you want, can turn on. Status light, on or off. Night vision can be auto or custom. And then uh, orientation can auto-rotate, which is a nice feature that they've been doing on a bunch of their newer, uh, more powerful cameras. And then, of course, tag it, share live stream, uh, manual recovery, restart, etc., etc. Then on the main tab here, you have the usual uh, status connection model, device version, last motion, MAC address, IP address, frame rate, bit rate, uptime, and then any of the alarms that you want to have set up for this or use with this, you can have here. And then if I had an SD card in here, you would see it uh, down here for internal storage. Now I'm gonna get this on the test rig and see how it compares to the other cameras of the G6 lineup and uh, maybe do a little side-by-side -side for 4K versus 5K. Granted, <laughs> at the end of the day, 5K is the whole lens and de-warped means it's already not 5K anymore, so take that all with a grain of salt and keep that in mind as we continue to do this test. Also keep in mind that the position that this is going to be in, which will be on the wall, similar to all of the other cameras that I have here, the bullet camera, uh, the turret, the G6 turret, um, the G6 Pro bullet, the G6 PTZ, those cameras are all designed to be normally pointing in one direction, whereas this is designed for full 360, and if you're putting it low down on the wall like mine is, you're going to be missing a lot of that, um, a lot of that area uh, versus putting it higher up when it's up on the wall or straight down from the ceiling so that you can get the entire 360 of the room. And yes, one last point to note, as was pointed out to me on X, technically it's not full 360 because it's not capturing what's behind the camera, such as you would see with 360 degree cameras for uh, action sports, such as the new DJI Osmo 360, which I have recently been testing, or the Insta 360 X three, four, five, whichever one you have, um, uh, and, and the coming onslaught of 360 degree, degree drones, those cameras are all specifically capturing 360 degrees all the way around the lens and stitching it together because it's two, usually two lenses, um, or two sensors rather back to back. This is technically just the 180. However, in security camera nomenclature, as I understand it, this downward facing view where you have one fisheye that is capable to get the whole area is generally called a 360. All right, hello. I am about 
10, 15 feet away from the camera and it is about six or seven, seven feet more so off the ground here above where I am. I am talking at about a normal volume as I walk by here as if I were to talk to somebody who was right next to me. The audio that you're hearing right now is coming off of my DJI mini microphone that is lapeled to my shirt, attached to my shirt, whatever, however you want to say that. And uh, this is what it looks like when I'm just walking by. The audio that you're hearing now is the sound of my voice talking at a pretty normal volume just like before as I walk past the camera so you can see things And going in the other direction. Popping up from behind my car here, seeing what that looks like, what that sounds like. I am now talking at the same volume as I did before, and I'm walking on by. All right, the sun has gone down quite a while ago. It's actually 10 o'clock at night out here, and I have the camera up on the test rack, as you saw before, along with all of my other fancy cameras. Now, I am approximately 10, 12 feet from the camera. It is about, uh, I don't know, seven, eight feet off the ground. And a uh, small problem, small problem that I discovered with this is the fact that due to the fact that I have all the other cameras over there, well, quite honestly, the IR emitters reflected off of everything and there was a tremendous amount of glare on the 360 camera. Now that is to be expected. This is not your normal operating environment. You would not have a hundred cameras or in my case, the seven cameras surrounding it. Now I have turned off all of the IR emitters on all the other cameras, so it's as good of a test as I can do. However, that being said, you really couldn't uh, see anything when I had the IR emitters on the 360 camera activated. So what you're looking at right now is actually one set of IR emitters on the AI Pro that I have up in the corner. That's my, you know, not test camera. That's the one that is actually hooked up to the rest of my system and looking out over here. I will turn that off in a moment so you can see what that looks like. But I also wanted to give you the opportunity to hear the volume and to see what it looks like with uh, some of the IR emitters on there because it, it wouldn't be a fair test otherwise. Now I don't have the ability to take it down here at night and because of the short uh, time frame that I'm trying to do this video I want you to be able to see what it would look like with some IR on at nighttime and then in my next video I'm going to do a more comprehensive test where I'm going to take it into a uh, social hall of an event center, community center as I've mentioned before and do an install over there. So now you can see I'm walking normal pace going down this block and uh, see how much I picked up on so that you can see what it looks like with this camera compared to perhaps some of the others. Now again keep in mind the IR is coming from a different camera. I will switch that to no IR in a moment and you'll be able to see what that looks like. All right night vision going to IR only for the AI Pro. Save that setting. Hop back over to my test um, NVR. Okay, so now I've turned off all of the IR emitters from all of the cameras. This is just natural light. It is not very bright here. There's a street light over there, but it's mostly blocked by that tree. There's a car with its headlights two blocks away, that away. Um, yes, I have a little bit of shadow from the street light there, and my neighbor has a light on, but pretty much I could not read any text on my hand here. I can see my hand, but I would not be able to read uh, from that in this light, and I have really good eyes. So let me just walk around a little bit and show you what that looks like. You can see me walking past here at a decent clip. Now keep in mind, unless otherwise indicated on screen, the audio is coming from my DJI Osmo, or my DJI Mini Microphone, Microphone Mini, I believe it's called. And so it's much different than what you're going to get off the camera, but I will also jump back into showing what the audio sounds like both in day and night on the uh, 360 camera here. I'm not going to be able to see color of the night. as good as the human eye. For reference, my car is also white. Um, but uh, yeah, that's my test for the night. So what do you think? Is this a solid upgrade over the AI360? Does the added resolution help? Is it as helpful as I think it is? Personally, I think this is a major upgrade to the lineup and Ubiquity did a great job on updating this and giving us the capabilities in here. And I'm looking forward to deploying this at a bunch of different locations, including at the community center that I regularly service, as well as possibly even, as I mentioned before, the beer lab. Normally at this point in the video, I would tell you how much it costs and when it will be available. However, because this was already announced and is available, it costs $499 and is available today, at least in the USA. Uh, check your local country stores by clicking the country dropdown and seeing if it's available where you are. Oh, and it comes in black and white. One other thing I want to show off is this flush mount is just a thing of beauty. Look how tiny that gets. Let me zoom in a bit here. 
you would hardly even notice that it's there. You walk into a doctor's office or someplace where it, aesthetics really matter, similar to how you had with the, uh, the AI Theta, I believe, you are going to be able to install this and really not even notice that it's there. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what that looks like in real life and seeing some of the install examples and videos from all of you. If you have questions and comments, I am going to be hanging on to this and playing around with it quite a bit more. So feel free to drop them down below. I do try and answer them. I don't always get to them all, but I do try. Please like and subscribe. I am trying to get to 20,000 by the end of the year. And as always, thanks for watching.